In this session, we will go through the introduction to Docker. If you are a developer or a tester, you might have come across this situation. So let us assume that if you are a developer for time being and you have your own environment set up to develop that application on your local machine. Okay, and now you have the application developed and you are ready to deploy that into SIT environment. Okay, now once you deploy the same application which was working in development environment environment might behave differently in SIT environment. Everybody has come across this particular situation or if it is working on SIT once it is deployed into production environment it could behave differently. It is because of different environments you might have on SIT and production uh, as compared to development or you might have not set up the environment correctly on SIT or production. Maybe some of the dependencies were not set up correctly on SIT or production or the, some of the dependencies versions may be different. You might spend a lot of time in comparing the SIT and development environment. So it could be lack of uh, dependencies or um, different versions of the dependencies you might be using. So this particular set of uh, deployments uh, from dev to SIT to production. So you have to have the same kind of environment uh, set up on all the machines, be it SIT, be it production and development. So you need to have the same environment set up as your development environment. Okay, first thing is setting up is not easy. It is time consuming and also the dependencies may vary. Suppose say if you are testing this application, um, if you are testing it in SIT and SIT is absolutely fine. And then if you started testing it on production, you start finding issues which were not there in SIT. So again, that needs to be investigated. Most of the time it will be due to the environment difference or the dependencies. You might have also come across, you know, um, some applications which you download from the internet. Um, it might work on your machine. It might not work on your friend's machine um, because of various factors. We have this standard issue. How do we resolve this issue? Okay. How do we make this environment a standard environment? And that is where the Docker comes into picture. To see what Docker is, let us go to docker.com and here you can see, so Docker is a container. A container is a set of things which are grouped together into one particular container. So you might have seen the ship container wherein the container might have variety of things in it bundled together Okay, so in terms of Docker uh, container, um, it's a standard unit of software that packages up code and all its dependencies so the application runs quickly and reliably. So in our case, whenever we move from development to SIT, uh, we found that in some cases, it is not very reliable. Right. So Docker solves that particular issue. It runs quickly and reliably from one computing environment to another environment. So it is not environment specific anymore. So it can run on any environment. Okay. A Docker container image is a lightweight standalone executable package of a software that includes everything needed to run an application code, runtime, system tools, system libraries, and settings. So what this Docker does is, so whatever you have in the development environment, so that can be made as an image and the same image can be distributed to your SIT environment and production environment. So once you have the common environment, with a common set of application code, a runtime environment, and system tools, 
and system libraries and settings, then you will solve the problem of, you know, running on my development environment and not running on SIT or production environment because you will be deploying the same container image with which contains all the set on SIT and production. The application which works on Dev now will also guarantee to run on SIT and production. If you want to run the Docker, so you need to have a Docker engine. Okay, so if you look at this diagram here, you will have this infrastructure, which is a hardware. On top of the hardware, there are different types of hardwares available uh, to run your operating system. Over this hardware infrastructure, so you have this host operating system, which can be Windows, Mac, uh, Unix, Linux. Okay. And on top of this host operating system, Docker engine sits. So this Docker engine ensures that it interacts with this host operating system and eventually the infrastructure part. Over this Docker engine, you can have many containers or images. We will see what is the difference between container and image later on. So you can have different containers which contains you know different applications so this container contains application a application b application c application d application e and application f so these are different applications which are run on this particular docker engine the docker containers which runs on these docker engine are standard and it is lightweight and it is secure that is the end of this session thanks for watching Please stand by for next video. In today's session, we will take a look at uh, the difference between containers and virtual machines. So you might have used virtual machines in the past. Um, we want to look at you know, what is the difference between virtual machine and a container. Okay, again, going back to the docker.com documentation, let us look at this picture now. So on the left hand side, we have a containerized application. On the right hand side, we have virtual machines. So if you look at the, the bottom layer, infrastructure remains the same in both virtual machine as well as Docker's. In Docker, the Docker engine sits on top of the host operating system, wherein in virtual machine, as you can see, it sits as a guest operating system. Okay, so each virtual machine will have its own guest operating system, wherein in dockerized applications, the host operating remains same, wherein in virtual machine, the, there is something called guest operating system. And these virtual machines uh, deals with the infrastructure by using a software called hypervisor. This hypervisor will interact with individual virtual machines, which is sitting on top of the, the actual infrastructure, which hosts its own operating system. So if you want to have application A in virtual machine, so you need to have a guest operating system, wherein in dockerized platform, you have application A, which interacts with the Docker engine, in turn, it will interact with the host operating system. There is only one host operating system, wherein here in virtual machine, it will have its own guest operating system for each of the application. So that makes this Docker a lightweight application compared to this virtual machine. And also the booting time, which, which is needed for virtual machine is far more than far more compared to your docker container okay it takes a lot of time to boot up in virtual machine environment wherein docker boots up very quickly
since each virtual machine contains a guest operating system it is not a lightweight application wherein the containerized applications are lightweight it doesn't take that much memory the application hosted on this particular virtual machine it takes time to boot up because the operating system has to boot up only when the operating system is up the application will start running and the boot up time is more as well as the memory consumed by the applications which is running on these virtual machines is more compared to a docker containers okay the docker containers will boot up quickly and also the memory taken by each of these containers is really small so if you go up a bit the docker container technology was launched in 2013 and it has picked up uh, the pace in recent years and now docker containers are everywhere so you can find uh, docker containers for linux windows uh, cloud services and uh, most of the data center now use dockers or docker containers in day to day operations and it is also an open source project so we saw the uh, the advantages and disadvantages or uh, the difference between container and virtual machine so does that mean that we get rid of all the virtual machines no we can still run different applications on these virtual machines and the combination of virtual machines along with containers can also be used as it says the containers and vms used together provide a great deal of flexibility in deploying and managing application that is the end of this session thanks for watching please stand by for the next video in today's session we will take a look at um, how to install and set up docker on windows machine as we have seen in the earlier video for docker to run we need to have a docker engine installed go to docker.com and products and container runtime and there are two types of docker engines available one is enterprise which needs to be paid and there is a community version download the community version click on download docker engine and that will take you to the docker hub and from this docker hub you can select which operating system you are on so now i have this docker desktop for windows so i select that you need to have an account here so i will log into my account here after logging in you will get this link to get the docker and click on the link to get the docker and i will put it into desktop while it is downloading i'm going to pause the video the download has finished so let us double click on it click on yes okay click okay As you can see, the installation was straightforward 
and it says installation succeeded let's close this after the installation is successful you need to go to where you have installed the docker okay and start this app so it should say docker desktop is starting as you can see it is starting up okay now it says docker desktop is now up and running okay open your favorite terminal and start typing docker commands okay and click on okay okay now let us open up a command prompt and type in docker info so if you get the information about the docker that means your docker installation is successful on your machine before you try out any of the commands you should ensure that this docker desktop is running if not you need to go to search bar and search for docker and click on docker desktop and wait for it to start running that is the end of this session thanks for watching please stand by for more videos on this channel see you in the next video in this session we are going to take a look at uh, the basic commands used with docker before we start looking at the basic commands we need to understand the difference between an image and a container that is a docker image and a docker container okay so what is a docker image so this is an image which has got these different layers let us say a b c okay so this is a set of layers which are created and bundled together to create this particular image okay and once we have created this image then we cannot modify this particular image however we can delete the image and recreate a new image or we create an instance of this particular image modify it and store it as a another image once this particular image is created we cannot modify it okay so when i say i cannot modify it let us assume that i wanted to add another layer here called d to this particular image i cannot do that however i can create a container based out of this particular image which has got a b and c already so which is exactly similar to this image but now i can add a d to it and create a new image which is image 1 however this image remains the same so if you pull this particular image it will still contain only a b and c however the new image image 1 will contain these basic layers which is a b c which is contained in image and the new layer which is added as d okay so once the image is created then you cannot modify it however you can delete it okay so that is about image so what is a container a container is a running instance of this particular image however okay so this container is
let us say I have let us say I have created a container based on this particular image which is called image so this will contain all our layers a b and c so this is a running instance of this particular image however if i create a running instance of image one it will contain a b c d layers now this particular container can be changed we can add additional layer to it okay as i said in image one so after creating the container we can add additional layer to it and save it as a different image so in our case we we stored it as image one so without creating an instance we cannot change the image content okay so however after changing the image content if is still pull this particular image then it will have it will still have a b c however the new image will have the additional layers which you have added so that is why it is immutable that means it is bound to have the same layers no matter where you install it or where you pull it container is an instance of image running on that particular machine so however the contents of container can be changed and saved as a new image hopefully it is clear the difference between an image and a container okay so when i said images okay where are these images stored if you go to hub.docker.com and after logging in you can click on explore this is where all the images are stored this is a kind of a repository where all the images are stored so as and today there are you know these many images available you can also create your own image and add it here you can see all the images which are verified and official images and the those images are categorized based on these categories so you can start looking at you know the one which is useful for you today what i'm going to take a look at is this ubuntu image these are some of the basic uh, commands which we will go through today um, some of them are image related and some of them are container related so let us look at the image related as we have seen all the images are stored in a repository called hub.docker.com so what we are going to do is we are going to pull an image called ubuntu onto this particular machine to pull that image we are going to make use of docker pull command so docker pull ubuntu okay so this will fetch the latest version of the ubuntu image this will fetch the latest ubuntu image from hub.docker.com so if you are using a proxy you need to set the proxy so that uh, it talks to hub.docker.com so that it pulls the image correctly the next command is since we have pulled the docker image called ubuntu i want to see whether that image exists on my machine or not so for that i'm going to make use of docker images okay as you can see it has pulled the image called ubuntu okay so this is the image and this is the image id and this is the size of that particular image this image is really small compared to the virtual pc image okay so the next thing is docker inspect so what docker inspect will do is it will go and inspect the 
image which we have downloaded let us see that now docker inspect ubuntu which is our image name so this will give you the details of that particular image okay so it has got an id if you look at further down then you might also see these are the environment paths which is uh, set inside this particular image and also you can see since we were talking about different layers you can see the these are the layers which are embedded into this particular image and you can also see the os which is linux here and the architecture which is amd64 so these are all the information related to that particular image okay the next command is docker history and ubuntu okay so this will provide the history of that particular image so this was the first part and this is the next part which was added and this is the next part which was added so it will give you the history of that particular image suppose say if i want to remove this particular image then i can do that by using docker rmi command docker remove image ubuntu okay now you can see that this particular image has been removed now if i look at docker images i shouldn't see any image here so that image has been removed now okay so these are some of the the basic commands for docker images okay so let me pull that image back okay so okay now we have that image back again so now we will look at the container related docker commands so now we have an image if you look at this particular image then this contains these are the layers which are contained in that particular image an instance gets created which is called a container now we will run the container by using docker run ubuntu okay what this will do is this will run an instance of image called ubuntu so how do we see whether this particular container has run or not so for that we use docker container ls okay as of now you can see that there is nothing displayed here but if i do all then you can see this particular container was created and then it ran and it exited okay so 33 seconds ago suppose say if i want to rerun this particular container now this particular container has got an id okay which is this now if i want to rerun this container what i can do is docker start and the container id okay now again docker container ls okay there's nothing running now now if i look at all it should say now this container was started again a minute ago and so this was created about a minute ago but it 
the status is exited 15 seconds ago so that means if you look at this one it says 31 seconds ago and this is 15 seconds ago so that means it started the container again this is the existing container so the difference between docker run and docker start is docker run will create an instance of the image and runs it wherein docker start will start an existing container docker run will create a new container and runs it however docker start will start the existing container it won't create a new container okay so that is the difference between docker run and docker start okay so we have seen docker start docker run and docker container ls so another thing is we can use instead of docker container ls docker ps which is same as docker container ls and we can also specify option called all which will display the same information okay the next command is uh, docker rename um, i have removed uh, all the docker containers um, let me uh, run the docker container again okay as you can see that um, there is a name okay so this is the container id and this is the image this is the command and uh, uh, what time this particular container was created and what is the current status and this is the port number and there's a name the name says uh, recursing maclean talk and right? so if you want to rename that uh, name then what we can do is docker rename and let's provide the id here and i will call it as docker demo okay so now if i look at docker container psl now instead of uh, recursing maclean talk uh, the name has been changed to docker demo so you can also rename the name of the container the next command is uh, docker stop um, since we know that you know whenever we run uh, docker start or docker run it will run and it will exit immediately so to show you how docker stop works so i have to go into interactive mode for that i will use docker run minus i which is interactive and provide me a terminal um, like tty terminal wherein i can put in the command and uh, the image name is ubuntu and provide me a the bash terminal okay okay now this is providing me an interactive tty wherein i can run the commands for example ls okay so now this is running in the background so if i open up another command prompt and docker container yes minus all if you look at this current status it is up 28 seconds ago now it is it is still not it has not exited yet so what we can do is we can run the stop command to stop the other container docker stop and this is the container id okay as soon as i type in this you can see it sends an exit command to the interactive terminal which was open so now you can see that that particular container has exited if you are running or if you, if 
if the docker container is running in background or in interactive mode then you can stop the container by using this stop command okay the next one is docker restart so docker restart and provide the container id so what it will do is it will restart the container and then again it will exit okay okay so now if i want to remove this particular let me close the other window okay so if i want to remove this particular container then i can do that by using docker remove and the container id okay docker container ps minus all okay as you can see it has removed this particular container and now because of the other run docker run we have another container here so let us kill this one as well or remove this one docker container remove and the so if i do docker container ps minus all then i shouldn't get anything okay so now this is how we can use docker remove to remove a particular container with the id or name okay so so we have seen this particular command docker run minus it ubuntu uh, bash so this is one of the important command which we will be using in the next few sessions um, in order to create a new image so these are some of the docker basic commands and we also saw how to make use of the docker run command with interactive mode so this we are going to use it in the next session to create our own image that's all we have in this session thanks for watching in today's session we are going to take a look at uh, bind mount and volumes before we take a look at uh, what is a bind mount and what is a volume uh, we need to understand why do we need bind mount and volumes by default the files created in a container are stored in a writable container layer and when the container doesn't exist the data will be lost suppose say if you have a container running and you have created a file on a container uh, once the container is stopped uh, then that particular file will be lost so there is no persistence available within the container so that means that data doesn't persist on the container once it is quit the data will be lost in order to persist the data so what is the other alternative the other alternative is to have that particular data on the host machine okay so docker has got two options for containers to store files in the host machine so that the files are persisted even after the container stops there are two ways of storing the files on the host machine and binding it to the container uh, the first one is using bind mounts and the second one is using volumes okay there is a subtle difference between the bind mount and a volume uh, wherein the bind mounts can be uh, located anywhere on the host machine and the files which are created within that particular host system can also be modified by the other processes other than the docker processes so that means uh, docker doesn't have control over the files which are on bind mount the other way is volumes um, volumes are directly managed by the docker so non docker process cannot modify the the file within this volumes 
and out of these two which one is the best way to uh, have the the data shared between the container and the host system uh, the one which is recommended is the volumes first we will try to see this particular statement wherein it says by default the files created on the container are stored in a writable container layer and when the container doesn't exist the data will be lost okay for that what i'm going to do is um going to see so currently i don't have any docker image so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull docker pull ubuntu so this is the image which I'm going to pull it from hub.docker.com and it is fetching the Ubuntu image from the hub.docker.com okay now the pull is complete now we have Ubuntu image which is downloaded so we will try to create a container out of Ubuntu image for that docker run minus it which is interactive tty and the image name and by default it is going to run this bash command okay so let us do an ls right now you don't see any file here what i'm going to do is i'm going to create this file called test.txt okay um, for that I'm going to use echo hello and move this to test dot text okay so now we have this test dot text created here and let's go and see the content of that by using cat command Okay, so now we have hello in that okay so since the container is running now so I'll open another PowerShell so docker container ls as you can see up about a minute okay so this container is still running which is this container if you see The container ID here and this is the container ID okay so let me close this now if I exit this then the container should stop okay so let us do docker container ls Okay, there's no container running anymore okay so now what I will do is I will go back and recreate this container by using the command docker run now if I do ls that test dot text file which we created earlier is gone so that means the data doesn't persist on the container once the container is stopped then the data will be lost so we lost this test.txt file okay now we have seen that once the container is stopped the data will be lost okay the other way of uh, now we will see the two ways of uh, persisting data on the host system first we will take a look at bind mounts Okay, let me exit this for bind mount uh, uh, what I have done is uh, I have created a folder called uh, docker under uh, D drive and currently it is empty I'm going to make use of uh, this particular command let me explain this command so it is a docker run hyphen it which is interactive tty and the name of the container will be bind underscore mount so you can give any name here and uh, the mount type is bind okay which is followed by hyphen hyphen mount and uh, we need to specify the source and uh, target folders so the source folder which i'm going to use is d colon 
docker which i have created just now on my host system and the target will be app folder if the target folder doesn't exist which is slash app then it's going to create the the target folder on the container okay and this is the image name okay so let me start this okay so if i do ls now you can see that this is the new folder which got created okay which is the target one which is slash app on the container so if i go to app folder and do an ls so there is nothing currently in the app folder let me create a text file okay so i'm going to make use of echo hello and then and move this string to test dot text okay so now we can see there is one file which is test dot text okay so let us see the content of this test dot text okay it's a hello if i go back to my host system and go to docker you can see that the same file is available here okay which we have created just now and it contains hello so now uh, this particular test dot text file is shared between the container and host system the disadvantage of this is uh, since this test dot text is not managed other processes which are running on the host machine can also edit this so for example i am editing it now so i'm going to add world to this okay so let me save this okay now the same thing will be reflected here cat test dot text even though i didn't edit it from this container okay so that is the disadvantage of using this bind mount okay so let me exit this Okay. now the container is not running anymore docker container ls so the container is not running anymore however we still have the file which is persisting on the host system that means it still exists with the same content okay so this is one way of binding host to the container or sharing the data between the container and the host okay so let us take a look at the the second way of let us look at the second way of sharing the data between the container and the host by using volumes okay so let me clear screen here now if you type in command called docker volume and hyphen hyphen help the bind mount doesn't contain its own set of commands however docker volume has got its own set of commands the set of commands include uh, create inspect uh, list volumes and uh, remove all unused local volumes and remove one or more volumes so create inspect ls prune and rm are the commands belonging to docker volumes before we use the docker volume so we need to create a volume on the host machine docker volume create so this is the command which i am using and the name of the uh, docker volume will be test volume okay now let me list the volumes docker volume ls so let us inspect this docker volume docker inspect test volume okay what this inspect says is the name of the volume is test volume and the scope is local and it has created 
at this place wire lib docker volumes test volume and underscore data so this is created at this point of time and then the driver is local so this is the mount point which is directly managed by the docker only the docker process can modify the data within the volumes none of the other processes like host processes can modify this particular volume because it is not available for uh, other processes okay let me clear the screen again okay now i'm going to make use of this particular command which is start the container by using a docker uh, run command and start an interactive tty and the name of the container is bind volume and and this is going to be mounting the volume here earlier we had given type as bind for bind mount and we have not given any type here however we have source and target source is the test volume and this is the volume which we have created just now and the target is mapped to slash app folder on the container and this is the image name so let me start this okay so again let us go to app folder because that is the mapped folder again we will create a test.txt file test.txt file okay now let us see the content let us see the content of this particular file let me stop the container by typing exit and now um, docker container ls this container is not running anymore however we still have docker volume which we have created okay which is called test volume and now this particular test.txt resides in this particular volume let me go back and create another container and since we already have this bind volume i'm going to create another which is bind underscore volume one and hit enter okay let me go to app folder now since this is stored in the test volume we had one file called test.txt which is now we had one file called test.txt which is also available with the another container okay so as long as the container is map to this particular volume all the files which are available in that particular volume is shared across multiple containers okay so let me do cat test dot text okay so let me add another clue and i'm going to add world from container to and append this to test dot text okay cat test dot text so now what i have is here hello and world from container to now if i exit this container i want to delete the two containers which i have created which is bound to this particular test volume and they are named with bind underscore volume and bind underscore volume one okay so let me check docker ps uh, container less okay so none of the containers are running docker container remove bind underscore volume okay and volume one 
okay so now we don't have any containers with that particular name so since i don't have this i'm going to create again bind volume okay which is the same command as this one here okay which is attached to test volume now this is a new container if you can see so this was the container id earlier and this is the new container id now let me go back to app and cat test dot text file okay so here you can see that even though this particular text was added with a different container and hello was added with a different container both of them are available to the the new container that means the data is persisted on the host machine and it has updated this particular file if you want to share the data across multiple containers volume or docker volume is the best way to share it okay so let me exit this clear screen uh, let me try to add the same container name again it should give me an error okay here it says the container name bind volume is already in use by container that is the reason i had removed the container if you go back to docker volume help we do have something called a prune and remove so you need to be very careful by uh, before using a docker prune or a remove command because there might be a lot of data within the volumes once you remove the volumes and the, all the data within those volumes will be lost so you need to be careful these are the two ways of sharing the data between the host and the container and data persistence on the host system <clears throat> now let us take a look at what are the differences between bind mount and uh, volumes okay bind mount files or folders is mounted into container and depends on the directory structure of the host system since bind mount depends on the directory structure on the host system and we are mapping that particular host system directory structure into the container uh, if you want to take a backup it is the host directory structure which we need to take a backup okay so we can use uh, hyphen hyphen mount uh, syntax containing key value pair so as we have seen the key value pairs are the source with the the source folder name and the destination with the destination folder name and the type is bind okay so that is the key value pair the file or directory does not need to exist on the docker host already so as i said you know uh, we were binding it to slash app folder it need not exist there it can create on its own okay once we use docker run command it will create that particular folder for us using bind mount i can go to that particular folder and modify that particular file okay so that means any other process can have access to this particular file and modify it without the knowledge of docker that means docker is not directly managing that particular file okay however if you look at the volumes okay and this is again a mechanism to persist the data okay you can also use okay you can also use minus v or minus minus volume okay separated by colon okay <clears throat> so let me talk about this uh, hyphen hyphen mount and hyphen hyphen volume here okay so by using hyphen hyphen mount or hyphen hyphen volume we can also do a bind mount or a volume mapping okay both can be used however 
in our case i have used hyphen hyphen mount by providing the type okay we can also use hyphen v or hyphen hyphen volume so in mount case it is key value pair however if you use hyphen hyphen volume it is separated by colon i will show an example later on on how to use this particular switch which is hyphen hyphen volume it creates a volume on the local system volumes are completely managed by docker so that means any other process other than the docker process will not have access to these files uh, as i have said earlier the backup and restore of volumes is easy but in bind mount it is the host system backup and restore so you have to have the same directory structure in case of bind mount for volumes the backup can be taken and easily restored in the same structure the volumes are platform agnostic so that means the folder structure whatever is created whether it is linux or windows it works seamlessly upon restore wherein with the bind mount you need to know the directory structure for linux as well as windows since the directory structure varies from linux to windows so you need to have the same directory structure the docker provides separate set of commands for volumes which we have talked about earlier as i said earlier we can also use uh, hyphen v or hyphen hyphen volume option within the docker run uh, let us see how that works okay so this is the command which is docker run hyphen it uh, which is interactive tty and the name is bind mount underscore v since we have used bind mount earlier i cannot use the same name uh, unless i remove that particular container since i have not removed so i have used underscore v here and this is the the option which i was talking about hyphen v or hyphen hyphen volume this is the source folder which is d colon slash docker and this is the destination folder and they are separated by colon and the image name the main difference between mount and hyphen v is or hyphen hyphen volume is d colon slash docker should be available before binding in case of mount however if this particular directory doesn't exist when we use hyphen hyphen volume or hyphen v it creates this particular folder if it doesn't exist before mapping it that is the difference okay the command which i'm going to use here is docker run hyphen it for interactive tty and the name will be bind underscore mount underscore v since i didn't delete the container or remove the container with the name bind underscore mount it still exists so i have added underscore v to create a new container okay so this is the new option instead of mount i am going to use instead of mount i am using hyphen v and here i have provided d colon slash docker which is the existing folder okay and followed by colon here and the destination folder so this is the source folder d colon slash docker is the source folder and app is the destination folder the source and the destination is separated by a colon and the image name which is ubuntu so i'm going to remove bash here okay by default it's going to open up a bash shell okay so let me do an ls go to app ls so if i do cat test dot text Okay, hello world so this is the text file which is under d colon docker the only difference between uh, hyphen v or hyphen hyphen volume and hyphen hyphen mount is if the source folder doesn't exist then by providing hyphen v or hyphen hyphen volume it creates this particular folder on the host system 
However, for mount, this particular folder, which is Docker folder, must exist before we bind it. Okay, so that is the difference. Okay, so let me exit this. Okay, let me try to inspect this particular bind mount underscore v. For that, Docker inspect bind underscore mount underscore v. So if you look at this, under mount section, you can see these are the attributes. The type is bind here, which is exactly similar to our bind mount. And the source is host mnt d docker and destination is app folder. As we can see, hyphen hyphen mount is exactly similar to hyphen v in hyphen v the source and the destination is separated by a colon okay so let us see the second way let me clear the screen okay let us see the second way of binding it using the volumes okay for that i'm going to make use of this particular command which is again docker run uh, hyphen it and the name of the container is bind underscore volume underscore v and here instead of hyphen hyphen mount i have used hyphen v and uh, this is the source which is the test volume which we have created earlier and this is the destination folder which is slash app and they are separated by a colon and you want to use the image name so let me hit enter Okay, so if I go to slash app again cat test dot text. So this contains hello world from container two. Okay, so this is exactly similar to hyphen hyphen mount command, but using switch hyphen v. Let me exit this. Let me do docker inspect bind underscore volume underscore v now if you go back to uh, mount section here the attributes are here the type is volume and the name is test volume and this is the source directory and this is the destination directory okay so these are the two ways of sharing the data between container and the host system i hope it is clear if not please provide uh, your valuable comment under the comment section under this particular video uh, so that i can uh, respond to your comments thanks for watching stand by for the next video in today's session we're going to take a look at uh, how to create your own image in the earlier session we have seen how to make use of the existing image which we have downloaded from hub.docker.com in today's session we will create our own image and upload it to hub.docker.com the image which we are trying to create today is robot selenium framework image okay so there are few steps to be followed the to create our own image, we need to have a base image. Since we have downloaded Ubuntu image earlier, we are going to use that as a base image. Let us go back to our PowerShell. Let us do Docker images. Now we have Ubuntu image. The first step is we need to make use of Docker pull command to download the ubuntu image since we have already downloaded that image so we are going to make use of this particular image by skipping step one the step two is we need to run a container using this image by making use of docker run hyphen it ubuntu bash command 
okay now we have a running container based on ubuntu image before that i wanted to show you something um, let me exit this first if i do docker history ubuntu this gives you the history of this particular image okay and if i do docker inspect and if you look at the layers attribute so it has got four layers built into it as of now okay so let us go back to our step two which is docker run hyphen it u to and bash command ubuntu bash command okay so now the container is running and within this container we need to add the packages the first step is we need to update the existing packages for that we're going to make use of apt get update okay so this will update the existing packages within this container by using apt get update uh, all the packages got updated now okay the next step is we need to install python so for that apt install python 3.7 so this is the specific version which we are installing which is 3.7 instead of apt get we can also use apt okay say so yes here 3.7 okay so it has installed python 3.7 so let us see whether it is installed or not okay python 3.7 hyphen v okay so now this is the command to verify whether python has has been installed or not so this is giving me the version as python 3.7.5 okay so as a next step we need to install pip pip is needed to install robot framework so first we need to install python 3 pip i will provide all these commands in the description of this video Let me pause the video and uh, come back after PIP is installed. After sometimes all the packages related to PIP um, got installed, uh, let us go back and verify whether PIP is installed correctly or not. So we can try our PIP3 command. If we get the help when we type in PIP3 command, that means our PIP um, that means our PIP installation is correct okay the next step is to install a robot framework using PIP which we have installed just now okay so the command is P 
PIP3 install robot framework. Okay, so once this robot framework is installed, uh, let us type in a robot to see whether this is installed successfully. After each step, you need to verify whether that particular package got installed or not. Okay, so I typed in robot there and it was expecting one more argument there. So that means our robot is robot framework is installed correctly. Okay, as a last step, uh, in my case, I'm going to install a robot framework selenium library. Okay, now all our installation is done on this particular container. If I exit the container now, then all my installation will be lost so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up another powershell okay so now i have two powershell windows okay one where we have installed all the necessary items to build an image and the other one we, I just opened it in the other window so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in docker container ls so this is the container which is running now okay so now before I exit this container from this window I need to commit all the changes made to this container into a, a new image for that I'm going to make use of this command docker commit followed by the container name where we have installed all the necessary software or the necessary items and this is still running okay so while it is running we are trying to create a new image okay so the command is docker commit and the container name and the name of the image Okay. And version one. Okay. So this is the name of the image. Here I'm saying it's Raj Tech Trainer slash Robot Framework and this is the version 1 of this particular image based on whatever is contained in this container. Okay. So let us hit enter. Okay. Now if I do Docker images Okay, this is the Ubuntu image which we had pulled and we have used it as a base image and now we have another image called Raj Tech Trainer slash Robot Framework and the version is version 1. In, in case of Ubuntu, the version is the latest version. In our case, we have created the first version of this particular image. Okay, so if I do Docker history of Raj Tech Trainer slash Robot Framework and version 1 here it says we have used the bash command now if I do docker inspect Now earlier we had four layers. Now we have the fifth layer which was added by all the installation which we have done on this particular container. Okay, so now if I quit this, okay, 
okay and clear screen okay let me close the other uh, powershell window okay so now if i do docker images now i have two images here now if i do docker run minus it and the name of the new image which we have created which is version 1 and bash okay so we have created a new container based on the new image which we have created so this particular image should contain python robot framework as well as robot selenium framework so this particular container should contain now python as well as robot let us see whether python still exists on this particular image or not okay python 3.7 minus v okay so we still have python on this and let me type robot here okay so a robot is also present on this container which we have created based on this particular image okay so now we have created our own image okay so these are the steps which we followed to create a new image the last command was docker commit and the container name container id and the name of the image okay so this is what we have done so you can create your own image based on the requirement uh, by following the uh, steps which we followed just now um, in your case these software which we need to install on that particular image which we are going to create may differ but the procedure is same right now we have successfully created a new image so let us see how to push this particular image to hub.docker.com so what i have done here is i have logged on to hub.docker.com and if i go to repositories okay and i have logged in as raj tech trainer and if i go to repositories i have one image here raj tech trainer uh, robot image and uh, this is the image which we are going to push it now which is raj tech trainer slash robot framework and version one okay so let me exit this now let me clear the screen the command is docker push raj tech trainer slash robot framework and version one okay now what it is doing is it is pushing the current image which we have built onto hub.docker.com So once it is pushed successfully, uh, we should see that under repository section. Once it is pushed successfully, we should see that under repositories section. Okay. Let me pause this video as it is pushing and it is taking a little bit of time. And once it is done successfully, I'll come back. Okay, now this command has been run successfully and it says it has pushed. Let us go back and see whether that particular image exists on hub.docker.com. Okay, so let me refresh this. Okay, now as you can see, there is a new image which got created here. Okay, so this is how we can push a particular image onto hub.docker.com since this is publicly available anybody can download this particular image and use it that is the end of this session thanks for watching please stand by for the next video on this series in today's session we are going to take a look at uh, creating 
an image based on docker file in the last session we have seen how to create our own image by creating a container and adding all the necessary packages within the container and creating an image by committing the changes to a particular image the same instructions or the same steps can be followed but in this case we need to create a file called docker file which is a text file and the instructions needs to be added to this particular docker file there are certain commands which are available which can be added to docker file which docker can interpret in this session we will see what is docker file first and then what are the different commands available within the docker file what is a docker file docker can build images automatically by reading the instructions from docker file instead of having all the instructions and creating it by hand we can also add these instructions into a particular docker file so you don't have to remember all the instructions or commands a docker file is a text document that contains all the commands a user could call on the command line to assemble an image so it is nothing but a, a text file which contains a set of commands to build a particular image using docker build users can create automated build that executes several command line instructions in succession that means using docker build we can create a new image based out of the docker file the important thing within the docker file is the command or the instructions which we give so that it creates a new image there are set of commands which the docker file takes okay so these are some of the basic and important instructions which can be used within the docker file to create an image as i said um, docker file will contain a set of commands to build a new image the first instruction which goes into docker file is from here we specify the base image which is used to create the new image in the earlier session we have seen ubuntu uh, was the base image which we have used okay so the same instructions can be given in the docker file by using from command so this must be the first non comment instruction in the docker file so that means you can have comments before this and after this but this should be the first non comment instruction the other command which we can use is run as we have seen in the earlier session uh, we used to run uh, the commands such as apt get install python apt install python or apt install robot framework so run will execute a command in a shell okay the next instruction which can be used in docker file is command so this is the default command to be executed when the container is run once we create an image based out of this docker file uh, when we start a container by default whatever the command specified under cmd will be run okay as we have seen earlier uh, with ubuntu image bash is the default command which gets executed whenever we run the container so the same way we can also set the default command uh, for our own image which can be executed when the container is run by using command the next instruction is entry point entry point allows you to run the container as an executable entry point is also quite similar to a command however entry point allows you to run the container as an executable in the next session we will see what is the difference between a command and entry point within the docker file label adds metadata to the image to be created so we can add information related to the docker image which we are creating under label such as who has created it the next instruction is env environment so you can set the environment variable using key value pair by using environment instruction env we can set an environment variable using env and it takes key value pair the next instruction is add what add does is it copies the files directories from the source file system of the image at path 
destination so what basically uh, add will do is it will copy the files and directories from the source to the destination provided within the image okay so these are some of the basic and important instructions which can be used with docker file to create an image in the upcoming session we will try to create an image by using docker file it is recommended to create a new image based on the docker file so that we can update the docker file at any time and the maintainability will be easier with docker file that is the end of this session thanks for watching please stand by for the next video in today's session we will take a look at uh, the two instructions which are quite similar but there is a difference those two instructions um, within the docker file are command and entry point what is the difference between command and entry point both command and entry point instruction define what command gets executed when running a container so let us look at what command does it sets default command with or without parameters which will be run when the docker container runs so whatever the command uh, which has been specified uh, with the instruction command that command gets executed whenever we run a container okay if the docker runs with a command default command will be ignored so that means <coughs> it is possible to override the default command for example we have created earlier one image with python in it so we can either use python as a default command and we can also override we uh, override it with a bash command okay so if you have multiple command instructions then only the last command instruction will be executed so if you specify multiple command uh, within the docker file only the last command gets executed whenever we run the docker container now let us look at the entry point entry point is quite similar to command but runs as executable that means the default command cannot be changed in case of entry point whenever we use entry point the default command specified within the entry point is the only command which gets executed so you cannot override this particular command okay however with the command you can override the the default command use entry point when you need command to be executed always so if we have multiple commands whenever we run the container then we should use command instead of entry point in entry point the docker command and parameters cannot be overwritten so the command as well as the parameters cannot be overwritten parameters will be appended by default if you have provided a parameter along with the command that parameter and command is set that means it cannot be overwritten however the additional parameters which are provided while running the container will get appended okay we will see how this command and entry point executes and how they are different by using the image which we have created earlier using docker file okay so earlier we had only three statements here with the docker file if you want to know how we created an image out of this docker file please refer to the earlier video one extra thing which i added here is the label okay so i have added the version as latest maintainer as raj tech trainer and the email id the additional command which i am going to provide here is first we will try to use command here cmd which is the instruction which goes into docker file and by default i want to run this command python 3.7 this command instruction is only taking the command which is python 3.7 and there are no arguments provided so let me go back to my powershell and since this docker file which i updated is in d docker we are in the same folder here so we will try to create an image based on 
the updated docker file so in order to create the image i'm going to make use of docker build command and the name of the image will be the same name which i have given earlier and the location of my docker file which is in the current location hit enter here and that will build this particular image let me pause the video and get back to it once it has created this particular image okay now it has created this particular image let me go and see let me clear the screen first and docker images okay now i have this raj tech trainer slash python which was created just now and um, now if i go back and run okay if i start okay if i create a container based on this particular image now by docker run hyphen 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 it and uh, raj tech trainer slash python okay and if i hit enter then it goes and runs the default command which we specified and the default command which we specified was if you look at the docker file it is python 3.7 okay by default it will run whenever we run the container by default it will run this particular command okay let me do control d however it is also possible to overwrite with a different command okay so by default here i haven't provided any command by default it will run python 3.7 command however i can override it with a different command in my case it is bash okay so now we have bash shell here now we will try to add a parameter here to add a parameter we need to first have the command within the square brackets and for the parameter i will add here slash app slash test dot py okay this is the parameter which we are passing to this command okay so let me save this and exit here let me rebuild this image okay so right now it is very quick because all the additional layers are already there docker run hyphen it minus v which is the bind mount which we are trying to create here okay d colon slash docker and we are going to map this to app folder inside the container okay and the image name is raj tech trainer slash python okay before we run this particular command we need to have this test.py inside the docker folder okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a file here okay test dot py okay and i'm going to have a simple print statement here print hello from test dot py okay so let me save this 
now we have this file created under a docker folder by using this particular command what we are uh, trying to do here is we are trying to map this d uh, docker folder and d docker folder which is a source folder and it is mapped to app folder on the container whenever it runs so that is why i had given slash app slash test dot py okay so let me run this now you can see that since this particular test.py is shared and this particular parameter is passed to this particular command. Now this python command is executed by passing this file name. That is why we, we get the output as hello from test.py. So which is what we have written in the test.py file. Let me copy this and then paste it here I'm going to make it as test1.py okay so let me open this again okay so I'm going to edit this to make it as test1.py now I have two files test.py and test one dot py okay by default it is using python 3.7 with this particular file name so i can override that by making use of this command with okay now you can see this is hello from test one dot py so by using command we can also override the command as well as the arguments okay now let us take a look at entry point okay so instead of command i'm going to add entry point here okay let us begin with the way we started off with command with just the the command okay python is the command which is specified to entry point okay so let me save this by using docker build command the image is created now let me clear the screen okay let me run this command docker run hyphen it raj tech trainer slash python okay so this is the first command which we ran with the uh, command instruction also so the, so far by providing either command or entry point with one command has got no difference at all however if i try to override the default command or default entry point here which is python 3.7 to bash in command it will override but however with entry point it won't override it will still go to the python which is the default command okay so that is the major difference let me clear the screen now let me add parameter here slash app slash test dot py okay so let me save this i have added a default parameter here which is test dot py okay so let me create or let me build the the new image okay let me clear the screen again now if i run if i run this command if i hit enter here this is hello from test.py okay so let me run this particular command it still says hello from test.py okay by using entry point neither we can override the command nor the 
parameter however this parameter whatever we have provided it gets appended to this particular command okay so that is what we have seen here docker command and parameters cannot be overwritten parameters will be appended get the benefit of both command and entry point wherein command will allow us to overwrite and entry point will have a fixed execution point for example if i provide command here and by default it should run for example help dot py okay and the entry point will be python okay so what we are doing here is our entry point our executable whenever we run the container uh, our executable will be python 3.7 and we can override this help.py with whatever the python file which we create okay by making use of entry point and command we can achieve this let us see an example of this okay since we provided a help.py under command i'm going to create here help.py so let me copy and paste this make it as help.py okay so let me edit this file within this help.py what i have done here is i'm just printing the usage if the user by default runs the container without providing any parameters then it should give us this usage string save this let me go back to powershell and clear the screen okay since we have added entry point and command within the docker file we need to create a new image we need to build a new image to build a new image again i'm going to use docker build command okay now the image is built so let me clear the screen so if i use docker run hyphen it minus v d colon slash docker and slash app raj tech trainer slash python okay so here i'm not providing any parameter by default it should give me the help string now i will provide the parameter here as app slash test dot py okay so what this will do is this will override the the default help dot py okay that is the use of command here by combining command and entry point we can also override the parameters okay by just providing entry point we will have an executable by providing command we can override the parameter so now if i run test1.py it says hello from test1.py so by making use of these two instructions command and entry point we can achieve one by default it will run only the command specified in entry point however we can change the parameter which we are passing or we we can overwrite the parameter which we are passing okay so this is what we have seen here so far okay let us do a quick recap on command and entry point uh, both command and entry point are used to run the default command whenever we create a container by using command we can set the default command however the default command can be overwritten with entry point we create an executable and the default command cannot be overwritten whatever the parameter which is provided while running the container will get appended to the 
the entry point. However, we can combine uh, the features of command and entry point by providing entry point. We can fix which command by default it will run and by using the command instruction, uh, we have the flexibility of providing the parameters during the runtime. I hope this is clear to you. If not, please provide the command. I will try to answer the queries. Thanks for watching. Please stand by for the next video. In the earlier session, we have created an image without using Docker file. In this session, we will try to create an image based on Docker file. If you are new to Docker file, please watch the previous video before continuing with this video. Okay, let us create a Docker file first. So I have a D uh, Docker folder. Under this folder, I need to create a file called Docker file. And there is no extension for this Docker file. Okay, so let me edit this particular file. As we have seen from the previous session, the first statement inside the Docker file is from. From and the base image which we are going to use is Ubuntu which we have already downloaded okay the image which we are trying to create here is just to run Python the command which we are going to run is apt get update which is the first command okay and by using a run instruction we will again install apt install python 3.7 okay so we are going to create a simple image with python in it okay let me save this and let me open up a powershell okay let me increase the font here um, okay okay let me go to that particular folder So inside this we have created our docker file so to create an image based out of this docker file we have to use this command which is docker build minus t and the image name is raj tech trainer slash python so this is the image name which I'm going to create and followed by the location of the docker file which is dot. Since the docker file is located on the same folder, hit enter. Now it is running those instructions which are provided in the docker file one by one. It is using Ubuntu image since we have already downloaded and it is running app get update so it is updating all the packages for ubuntu okay here the installation failed or creating an image failed because it is asking do you want to continue yes or no while running this apt install python command it was asking for user input do you want to continue yes or no so in order to avoid this because we cannot give yes or no here so instead of that we will add switch here minus y to skip that so we have added minus y to skip this particular user input okay so let me rerun this Okay. 
as you can see it is trying to install python now what it says is it has successfully created a new image since we didn't provide any version there so it has created a latest version of this particular image okay so let me clear the screen now so let me go to docker images as you can see it has created this particular image raj tech trainer slash python image with the version latest okay, let me clear the screen now if i do docker run hyphen it raj tech trainer slash python okay by default it runs bash command now if i do python 3.7 okay so this image contains now python so when i run this python 3.7 command so it goes to our python command prompt and it also displays python 3.7.5 is installed within this particular image now with this we have successfully created an image based out of docker file okay so this is a simple docker file which contains three instructions one is from instruction and two run instructions preferred way of creating an image is based on docker file let me exit this okay if you see for the first time when i ran the docker build it took some time but further docker builds took very less amount of time and this is the easiest way as well as quickest way of creating an image that is the end of this session please stand by for the next video